Everybody come ready for the word today. Come on, make some noise. Yeah. If you got your Bibles, turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 10. 1 Samuel chapter 10. I'm excited to kick off, kick off this brand new series called Barriers. Come on, Barriers. How many believe it's, uh, Barriers, finding freedom and breaking new ground? How many are thankful that are believing that you're going to break some new ground this year? Come on. You're going to find some freedom in some areas. Barriers aren't going to hold you back, but simply set you up to have a better year than you've ever had before. And so we're kicking off this series, and I'm, I'm excited about it. And if you're taking notes, here's what I want to talk about. And I encourage everybody, keep your Bibles open. We're going, to, we're going to read through chapter 10. We're going to read a little bit in chapter 9. But today is a note-taking day. You can take notes on your service guide, pull out your Bibles, just keep it with you. We'll kind of go back and forth. And, and because today, I really want to preach to you about topics and values that you've probably already heard before, but I'm going to preach it from a different perspective in the Bible that I've never seen. In fact, I've, I've never, I just got it over the Christmas break. I read it, and the Lord gave it to me. I've not heard it preached by anybody. I never heard it talked about. In fact, I had to run it by a few of my friends that, does this even make sense? So I'm going to preach it for the first time. Y'all just y'all let me know if it's bad or not. You know, shoot me an email, okay? Shoot me an email. Let me know if it's good, too, okay? Help me out a little bit. But, but, but I'm excited to preach it for the first time. But it's values and stuff. Here's what I want to talk about today for taking notes. Top of my message is this. Start strong and finish stronger. How many want to start strong? Come on, this is a group participation church. Come on, let me see your hands. Start strong. How many want to finish stronger? Come on, are you with me? You want to wake up January 2020 and not be better than what you started in January 2019. And we're all good at starting strong. Am I right? You, you going to start, you going to eat right, you going to hit up the gym, right? You going to get your slim slow on. You going to, like, you... You're going to get the right Bible reading plan. You're going to read the year. And then all of a sudden come March. All of a sudden you hit that catch up on the Bible reading plan and you version just because you feel bad that you've lost so much, right? And then all of a sudden you put your reading plan on private where nobody can see instead of public for all your friends to see. Oh, see, you do, you do that too, huh? You don't want all your friends to know you behind the game. <laughs> but but we, we always start strong. We make good decisions. But the question is, can you be disciplined within those decisions? Can we start strong and can we finish stronger? Because we all believe that God has put a purpose and a calling on our life. We'll have dreams in our heart to be and to do. We're like, God, man, I want to get there. We start strong. But the reason why we don't finish stronger is because, one, how many degree we get impatient? Can anybody get it? I almost titled this message, I'm starting Monday. Come on, how many know that would be a great one? Like, I mean... That is a phrase, Brandon Barber, a.k.a. starting Monday. Almost got a shirt made that says starting Monday on the front, and on the back it says, I love keto. Like, it's like, come on, some of my friends know that's for real. Like, my wife, for sure, is like, how many times you starting keto? I'm starting Monday. Like, that's like, it's like, I love you, and I'm starting Monday are the two phrases in my household. But it's a discipline for me this year that I'm going to eliminate that. I'm going to start strong, and I'm going to finish stronger than I ever have. God has a call, not for me, this, is, this sermon is personal for me, but I also want you to make it personal for you, because you got a purpose, you got a calling. If God didn't need you, he wouldn't have sent you here, but you're here, you're alive, so he needs you, and there's some values that we need to take, and I want to look at this story, I want to set it up, I'm going to read it, and then, and then give you some points behind it, but I love this story in 1 Samuel chapter, chapter 10, and it shows us how to start strong and how to finish stronger. It shows us some values about life that if we apply these values, we won't just start good, but we'll stay good and we'll be better than how we started. That's how God works, right? He makes things greater in everything that he does. And so in this story, it's a story about King Saul. Anybody ever King Saul? So there's King Saul. Anybody heard of David? Okay, if you're kind of new in the Bible, there's a, the there's a story of Saul and then there's the story of David. Both were great kings appointed by God. But one king, King Saul, he was a wise man and a great king. How he started, he started strong, but he did not finish strong. Uh, David is a guy who was appointed and called by God, who started strong, but he also finished stronger. So what can we learn by these two? In other words, there, there's a difference here. And you would think, maybe let's learn from David on the things that he did do so that we can keep being stronger. I thought from the perspective what if we learn from Saul? What are the values that God gave him? 
What are the things that he let go of that he started strong that did not allow him to finish stronger? Whatever's in your heart to do, I want this to be the best year you've ever had. I want it to be the best year for your dreams, your calling. I want it to be the best year of hope and joy you've ever had, the best year for your marriage, the best year for your family, for your job, your business, your school, your high school. You're going to get a B in math. Come on, somebody, right? Like, this is going to be your year. Amen on that? I took economics four times, and I celebrated when I got that C. Come on, somebody. Hey, hey, that's when I realized my calling wasn't business but ministry. And so, <laughs> so are, are you with me? It's like, like I believe it's going to be the best, the best year yet, but, but we can learn from these guys. Saul did some things that he's an amazing king, but he didn't finish strong. What, what can we learn? So in this story, I'm going to give you a little bit of a, of, of, of a, a synopsis of this story in 1 Samuel chapter 10. is what we have is Saul's not king yet. This story that we're going to read today is the moment that Saul was anointed king. And so right before that, what happened is his, um, his father, they lost some donkeys in the land from where they were. And, and his father sent Saul to go and, and try to retrieve the donkeys and find them. And he couldn't find them. And along his way, this is all in chapter 9. And along the way, uh, they couldn't find him, and they were about to give up. Well, his servant said, hey, we're actually in an area to where there's a prophet by the name of Samuel. We can go, everything they say, this man says, everything that he says comes true is what people say. Why not give this one more shot? Well, what he didn't know is that the Lord told Samuel around this, the next day around this time, I'm going to bring you a man, and you're supposed to anoint him as the king of all my people. And so we fast forward and we, we have that moment. He meets Samuel. They go up into the house of the Lord. They uh, prepare a meal together. And then God speaks to him. And we'll read that in just a moment. Uh, speaks to him about who he's called to be. And, and at first Saul just doesn't receive it. He said, I'm from the smallest tribe, the tribe of Benjamin. I'm from the weakest family. I'm, from the, I'm, I'm way unqualified. And we're going to read here in a second. He said, no. He said, no, you're exactly who I need you to be. You are qualified in everything. Everything that you say you're not, I'm saying that you are. And we're, we're going to see that in just a moment. But what happens is, is he says, hey, I've anointed you and I've called you. He said, along the way, he said, go and be who I've called you to be. But along the way, you're going to encounter some signs that is going to confirm what I've called you to do. And I thought I would take the approach today about what are some key things to look for to confirm the dream that God has in your heart. You're going to have to come back for that message, okay? I'm just setting you up. But what I want to talk about today is when I studied this, is every moment, there was three areas that Samuel and God sent Saul. And it, at all three of these areas, not were they just confirmations that this is what he's supposed to do, but all three areas, they were unique. I'm like, why there? And when I began to study it, I realized that every stopping point to confirm his destiny was a value that God was trying to teach him to show him to start strong so that he can finish stronger. Amen. And when I studied this, the three things that God started with him to start strong are the things that would give him strength that God showed him are the exact same three things that took him down later in life. So would you not agree? Anybody interested so far? Come on out. Like, would you not agree that we need to learn from God what the Bible says you need to value these three things if Saul was a great leader, guess what? You can be a great leader. If Saul was a great man, you can be a great man. You can be a great woman. You can be a great husband, a great wife, a great father, a great mother, a great friend. You've got greatness on the inside of you. What are the values to help us start strong? We can just make a decision today to do it. But will you be disciplined enough to finish stronger to keep these values in your life? And not at the end of your life. Wish that you would have stayed strong. Come on, is this helping anybody, right? How do we start strong and finish stronger? Look in your Bibles real quick to 1 Samuel chapter 10. 1 Samuel chapter 10. I'm going to read this pretty quick in verse 1. You look at the big Bible behind me. If you're there, say, yeah. yeah. Here we go. Verse 1. Then Samuel took a flask of olive oil and he poured it over Saul's head. He kissed Saul and he said, I am doing this. Check this out. I am doing this. Make This is a word for him and I'm praying that it's a word for you. I am doing this because the Lord has appointed you. And he says, you're the ruler over Israel. That was his calling. Notice this, his special possession. Come on, let me tell you right now. 
Every single one of you, God has appointed you. He has called you. I've already said it. If he didn't need you, he wouldn't have brought you into this world, but he needs you. He appointed you. Even as a young person in Jeremiah, he said, I knew you before you were even in your mother's womb. I called you and I set you apart. You can be set apart in high school. You can be set apart in college. You can be set apart in your job. You, can, you got a calling in your life. You are here to do something and to be something. He says, I've called you. And he says, you're special. Every single one of you are special. Your dream doesn't align with somebody else's dream. Why? Because he needs yours. It's special. It's unique. Come on, somebody say, I'm special. special. That's kind of weird to say, right? Okay, here we go. Go on, verse 2, verse 2. When you leave me today, notice the step of faith. You will see two men. Here's the first moment that he comes to. You, the first place, you'll see two men beside me beside Rachel's tomb. If you want to write that down or underline it. First place is Rachel's tomb. On the border of Benjamin. I'm, I'm going to read this. I'm going to break them all down, I promise. And it says, on the border of Benjamin. Notice it was on the edge of where he came from. That'll preach right there. They will tell you that the donkeys have been found and that your father had stopped worrying about them and is now worried about you. And I think that's the heart of God right there. God is saying, you're worrying about all this other stuff and I'm worried about you. I'm trying to get your attention. I need you to start with the reset. I'm trying to get your attention for what you're called to do this year. Man, okay. I don't know if anybody's with me. Y'all getting this? All right, all right. Let the brother know. He is asking, have you seen my son? Verse 3. When you get to the, here's the second place, the Oak of Tabor. You will see three men coming towards you who are what? On their, notice their approach. They were on their way to worship God at Bethel. One will be bringing three young goats, another will have three loaves of bread, and the third will be carrying a wineskin full of wine. They will greet you and offer you two of the loaves, which you are to accept. Then it goes on to say in verse 5, when you arrive at Gibeah of God, that's the third place, where the garrison of the Philistines is located, you will meet a band of prophets coming down from the place of worship. They will be playing a harp, a tambourine, a flute, and a lyre, whatever that is, and I'm just going to call it a kazoo. Come on, there we go, all right? And they will be, notice, they will be prophesying, speaking the voice of the Lord. And notice verse 6. At that time, the Spirit of the Lord will come, not just on you, but will come powerfully upon you, and you will prophesy with them. And you will be changed into a different person. How many want to be better at the end of 2019 than you are right now? He said, all these things will take place. Do what must be done for God is with you. Skip down to verse 9. Look at verse 9. And Saul turned and he started to leave. And God gave him a new heart. Gave him a new heart. And all Samuel's signs were fulfilled that day. Can I tell you, it's my heart of all hearts. My passion of all passions is for God to fulfill everything that is in your heart to do. It all starts with having a new heart. And it all starts with, there's no coincidence that God said, I've called you, but I'm going to send you down this path to show you what it means to walk in this calling. The values that you need to start strong and to finish your life stronger. Come on, are you with me? So so what's the purpose behind these, all right? Uh, Number one is this, he stopped where? At Rachel's tomb. He's, well, why, why Rachel's tomb? But the first thing you got to understand is that wasn't his end game. His final destination was Gilgal. He, this was not, by the way, this was not the quickest route to get to his final destination. He should have gone right, but God, and with the help of the prophet Samuel, said, no, go here. It may, I could see him calculating in his mind, just like, like, it makes more sense for me to get here. But you're sending me to Rachel's tomb. It was not the shortest route to the final destination. First thing we need to learn, be okay when God's direction, pace, and his route is not what you want it to be. Always be ready that everything is subject to change. This is not popular preaching, but it's good preaching. Because we we want exactly, anybody want God to say, go from A to B, and that's exactly the route to take. We believe God, man, I want to get here. I want, I, want to do, I want to do that, but be prepared. The signs and the things that God wants to show you this year may not be from point A to point B. 
everything is subject to change, but you got to keep in mind that he is the author and the finisher of your faith. The route he takes you may not be what you want, but there's some values he's trying to teach you that will help you finish stronger than you ever have. Come on, I feel like I'm preaching. Can I get an amen in the house? Are, are you with me? And it's just like any, anybody, anybody directionally challenged, it's okay to raise your hand up. Left hand. No, your left hand. Okay, so it's like, you've been directionally challenged. Anybody have to watch Google Maps? Like, if I tell you to take two lefts out of here, you get lost. You got to use map. Well, I just learned about a new app. I heard about it, but I actually tried it out for the first time three months ago, and that is called Waze. Come on. Come on. Anybody a Waze fan? Let me know. Are you with me? And if you're a Waze fan, you know the statement. Waze is the... Okay, not everybody knows, but we got two. That's good. So I'm preaching, right? Waze is the way. It is the way, the truth, and the, I mean, Waze is biblical. Are, are with, anybody not familiar with Waze? How many are? Let me see your hand. You know what I'm talking about, right? But you, you've been afraid. Have you tried it and then been afraid to try it? Because when I tried it, I mean, Google Maps gives me a route and then it doesn't detour. I'm like confident with it, right? And I'm actually pretty good at some directions. I actually don't need a map too much. But, but I started using Waze, and at first, I didn't like it because it started taking me down. What it does, if you don't know what Waze is, is everybody kind of comes together. It, it reads where traffic is in the city, but everybody can, like, they'll, they'll come in, and it's amazing. It's like the whole community of Houston lets you know, hey, this is crowded. Don't go here. Like, it lets you know there's police here. Come on, somebody, right? It lets, it lets you know that there's a pothole here. Don't bust your tire. It'll say, hey, there's somebody stranded by the side of the road. <laughs> I couldn't help but think, that's awesome, but kind of messed up. It's like the Samaritan, right? The good Samaritan, right? Hey, there's somebody there, but I ain't going to help them, right? It's like, it's like, and so you just check. Yes, they're there. That feels really bad. But, 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 but it's helpful, right? Everything, <laughs> that's funny, isn't it? Like, everything about the ways that, it's amazing, but it'll, it'll, it'll judge it, and then it'll pick the best route for you. And when you try it the first time, it freaked me out because it took me down routes and roads that, that I didn't recognize. And I'll never forget the first time I tried it, I was like, man, forget this. And I know the way that I know how to go. And I jumped in like anybody like that old school, like you're going to do it no matter what you say, what people say about you. You can get in the car. You know exactly the route because Google is telling you, but they could care less about technology. I've been here too long. I've lived here over 30 years. I know which way to go. Am I? Okay, New Year's resolution, prayer and fasting. And so it's like, it's, it's like but I kind of had that come in too. Like, I know the road. And all of a sudden, I hit the road and the highway, and I get caught in the same traffic waves I was trying to avoid. And then I get ticked. And then I decided to finally trust it one day. And all of a sudden, the way that it take me, I didn't understand it. All of, a sudden, it will, all of a sudden, in the middle of my route, it'll recalculate. And all of a sudden, everything is subject to change. But eventually when I learned to trust that ways is the way and I found the peace and the route, I found the peace and the pace, and I trusted that it's got the best timing in mind for me. Can I tell you, I realized that ways is the way, the truth, and the life. Come on, somebody. I, I got five-star rating on that one. Are, 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 you, are you with me? <laughs> like, like, it's amazing to me how many of us go into the year with an agenda we put on God. That's why I'm encouraging, prayer. don't go into prayer and fasting with an agenda. God, I need you to do this, 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 this. You can go in praying and believing for something, but don't put in an agenda of God when his agenda might not match your agenda. And all of a sudden, you get upset. No, 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 what if we just go in in faith? You trust that he is the way. You trust that God, the word is the way. God is the, is the way. I didn't even got to the reason why we're at Rachel's tomb yet. That's just trust the way. God sent him this route. And everything might be subject to change. So can you have faith this year more than ever? And when things don't align the way you thought, this job didn't work out, this dream didn't work out, the, this class didn't work out, this relationship didn't work out, the things you thought weren't going to work out, be okay for it not to work. Know that God just might be moving in a different route. Trust that the destination hasn't changed. He's just shifting some things to get you to where you need to go. And he's trying to teach you something along the way. This is what he was trying to teach Saul. He was trying to teach Saul. Why Rachel's tomb? Why did he send him? What was so significant about Rachel's tomb? Well, if you study Rachel's tomb, the, Rachel's tomb was a place of remembrance for children and family. Saul, don't forget, I've called you to this. Friends, don't forget, 
I want to good everything in your heart. I've called you to do this this year. 2019 is going to be the best, but don't forget this value. Family first. Family is above everything. Marriage and family, family before work. Marriage before work. Marriage before everything. Family, if family don't work, calling can't be fulfilled. If marriage don't work, calling can't be fulfilled. Like we got to work. Come on, it's like not popular teaching, but it's real teaching. Let me tell you, man, we, we need it. We need a healthy marriage. We need a healthy family. Before God gave us the calling to go and reach people and he started the local church, he first started in Genesis, what? Marriage and then family. Because marriage and family goes first. Saul, I want to do some great things on the inside of you. I want to pursue every dream that is in your heart. I want to get you that job. I want you to launch that business. I want to give you that promotion. I want to give you every desire. But don't do it without remembering that family comes first. What does that mean? Does that mean we got to get back to dating? (laughs) It's amazing how you get married and you forget what got you there. You fell in love to get married because of the things you did before you got married. Why not start strong? And the reason why you don't finish stronger is because you stopped what you started. Like, get back to dating. Like, get, get back to, like, family needs to be first. Get back to, like, if you just have one night where you sit around the table as a family and you eat dinner. And you talk about the day. Like, we do that with my kids all the time. We sit down at least three to four times a week and we have dinner. With our, put the phones away. We play games. We play. We even do an in-person, uh, like a, a game where they have to impersonate each other. And like they actually, they have to impersonate somebody else in the in the family, and we get to guess who they're pretending to be. It's an amazing game. You should try it. You'll learn all sorts of talents and about your kids and secrets you didn't know. Okay, so it's like. It, it, it's pretty. It's it's very strategic game. Come on, somebody. Come on. That's called parenting 101, right there. All right. But how many, how many would agree family first? Yeah. Family first. He even called it out to Saul in 1 Samuel 9, verse 20. He said, I am here to tell you that you and your family are the focus. You and your family are the focus. There's not a single person in this room. You lose focus for your ministry. You lose focus for your job and your business. You lose focus on everything when things aren't good at home. And some of you, maybe home life isn't that great. And I understand that it might be hard what I'm saying. You know what? If you don't have a great family right now, that's why we call Elevate Family. Find some friends that that can be family. Friends can be family for you through a season. Man, can we agree? Saul, man, focus on family. How do I know that? Because God started with that value. That value is what brought him down in the end. If you know the story of Saul later on in life, something shifted in his heart. And all of a sudden, he valued the throne over his family. And division came between him and his sons, Jonathan, him and his son, David. He even tried to kill David. David almost tried to kill him. It's like like almost did. Like division, can I tell you, the reason why maybe division has come in tension in your marriage and your family and your friendships is because all of a sudden everything else is more important than that. What if we this year we start strong, we learn from the value of what Saul and what God is saying. Let's put family first. Can I get an amen on that? Second place you sent him to was, was the Oak of Tabor. The Oak of Tabor. I heard somebody say, say what? So I said it again. All right, all right. The, the Oak, say what? Say the Oak of Tabor. What, what's, what's, what's so, what's the resemblance of an oak? What does an oak represent? An oak represents strength. It represents roots. In all throughout scripture, it says, if your roots are grounded in me, in the house of God then you will produce fruit and you will flourish. Why go there? What at the oak? Man, because here's what he said. Whatever happens here is going to be what keeps you strong. What happened there? Two things took place. Anybody enjoying this so far? Two things things took place. Three men walked up to him, and two things take place with those three men. The first thing is this. As it notices, it says those men were on their way to the house of Bethel. Amen. In other words, they were... They were on their way to the house of God. Saul, you're called. You're about to be used by God. First value, Rachel's tomb. And I want you to go to a tomb because at the end of your life, the legacy you're going to live is the legacy that you're going to leave is something that is passionate that your family knew that you loved them first. And then the second 
is I need you to go to this oak because you notice these men are passionately pursuing the house of God. Saul, make sure that you always are coming to the house. Make sure you make church a priority more than you ever have in your life. Make sure that church is something that you just don't casually run to, but it's something that you wake up and Sundays are a priority for your family. Sundays is something where you connect to. Come on, are you with me? Like there's something about the house of God that has to change. You have to have a passion. Maybe 2018, maybe you, you, you came to church not as much as you wanted to because things came up. Things came up, and all of a sudden, Sunday morning, we've all been there, just like, I want to go, right? It's, but all of a sudden, this year, you're going to make a commitment. The best place I can go is to the house of God. Amen. The best place I can raise my family is in the house of God. Because your kids right now, they're learning how to worship. They're learning how to read the Bible. Sports are amazing. Activities are amazing. But none of that gets them into heaven. The only thing that gets them to heaven is knowing their Savior and knowing Jesus and knowing how to worship. You're here starting strong. What if you made a decision to be disciplined this year, to finish stronger this year more than ever, and you make church a priority more than you ever have in your life? Church needs to be the sort. Why? Why? It's, it's like, because when you come in here, you can't not help but feel God moving. Yeah. It doesn't matter how bad yesterday was. Am I right? Yeah. The moment you walk into worship, you just feel something changing you. That's, that's why I love Wi-Fi. Anybody like Wi-Fi? You might, you might no, like some internet. For, like, I mean, I love it, right? It's amazing that when I set up the Wi-Fi connection in my house, it's amazing. But then when I leave my house, what happens? It doesn't connect anymore. But the beauty of it that I love is that the moment that I walk back in the house, it automatically connects. Why? Because it knows that I've already been there before. Can I tell? I'm about to preach this, right? It's like, how many know, like, that's what it is when you've come to church. That's why all through our scriptures, run to the festive throne. Run to the house of God. Be planted in the house of God. Because no matter what you're going through, when you get here, you're automatically connected to his presence and his praise and his hope and his joy. So we're good at running a church when things feel good. We're bad at running a church when things aren't good. What if you did different this year? What if you stayed connected more than ever? And I say this all the time. I say this all the time to people. And I want to say it at the top of the year. And if you're visiting us here at Elevate, he said, give me one year of your life. Go all in. And there's families here in this church. They're doing the same thing. They've came up and let me know. I listened to what you said. I'm doing it. And they're, they're coming up on the end of the year. And it's rang true with exactly what I'm about to tell you. If you give me one year of your life, you go all in. Come to church. Get plugged in. Go to Connect class right after service. Get plugged in. Serve. Give. Be, be a part. Go to a small group. Like, like, get, like make it a priority. One year from now, if you, this is how much I believe in it. If your life ain't better, I'll quit. We can have another preacher. But I'm so confident in it. Because not one time has that failed. Because I know when you stay committed to the Lord, not only will you start strong, but you'll finish stronger than you ever have. Can I get a good amen all that? So will you give me one year? Will you and your family give me one year? Give me some time to show you that this church can impact your life more than you ever have. So those three men, they showed him, hey, hey, Saul, things are about to get a lot busier. And if you think about it, Every single one of you, if you think about this, if God answered every single one of your prayers tomorrow, your life wouldn't slow down. Your life would just get spe would speed up. Yeah. And I think that's why God is saying, hey, you want me to answer everything to speed things up. But I'm saying, no, it, when things do speed up, I need to make sure you got this value in place. And your family doesn't stop coming to church. Have you thought about maybe God hasn't answered that prayer yet? Because he knows when the busyness of life hits you, you'll miss out on this value he's trying to teach you. And maybe this year he needs you to get this value before he opens up the door for things to get busier. Because if you don't keep this value, you won't finish stronger than what he brought you. Okay, I'll leave that one alone. Praise the Lord. The three men, what? They say they were pursuing the house of God. The next thing the three men did, the next thing the three men did is they says that they brought goats. They brought bread. They brought wine. What did they do? They brought every element of offering. And the Bible says that they gave Saul two loaves of bread. They gave him 10% of their offering. 
What is this saying? Saul, make sure that you're going to start strong. And the way you do that, the value you carry is living a life of generosity. This is a topic that's hard for everybody because it's talking about money. But money is the number one leader in divorce and family. If we're saying, hey, go to the, go to the tomb of Rachel, remember family and marriage first. Why not saying, God, I'm also going to live by the value of generosity. Hallelujah. And I'm going to put my family first so it doesn't interfere with that. I'm going to put my money first so it doesn't interfere with family and marriage. And there's some of you, the Bible makes it very clear. I'm not going to go into full teaching because I'll break it down more in this series. But, 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 but a barrier that I believe that everybody faces is the barrier of finances. And it's because you're trying to control 100% of your finances when God is saying, hey, just give me 10%. I'll let you work with the 90, but I can do more with your 10% than you can do with your 90. It's a great business deal. And that's what the Bible says. It's called tithing. You give your first love, your first fruits into the house. And Saul saw that model to him, and God is saying, build that value. Can I encourage you? Maybe some of you here today, the way you can start your year off strong is you just start tithing, and you start giving. Not for me, not for this house, but for you. But for you, the Bible says to give 10%. Every time you get paid, 10% goes to the house of God. And there's many of you in here, you can do that. And still survive. But the reason why you haven't done it, it just kind of freaks you out. That you put in 10% of your money into, into somebody else's hand. It's like, no, we try to make it very clear where it goes. Your giving goes. We try to tell you every week and all the time. And, uh, and, and, but you're, it's like it freaks you out a little bit. But let me ask you, is it better in your hands or God's hands? You don't know what he can do because you've never given him the opportunity to do it. What if you started this year stronger? And you said, I'm going to tie 10% starting today. I'm going to trust God. And you watch God faithfully show you at the end of your year how you finish stronger financially than you ever have. Are you, are you, some of you, you can't start 10%. I get that. I don't want you to not feed your babies. I want you to take care of your kids. Take care of, you got to do that. Start somewhere. Start at 5%. Don't give God nothing. Give him something to work with. And all of a sudden, halfway through the year, come July, August, guess what? When we go into prayer and feasting, you're going to be like, hey, hey, hey. I started at 5%, Pastor, but guess what? My first paycheck of August, I'm going 10% because God has blessed me and he has shaken me. Come on, are you with me? This year, put family first. And what took Saul down? He stopped living generosity. And he stopped going to the house of God. 1 Samuel 15 verse 9 says, Saul and his men spared a life and kept the best of the sheep and the goats the cattle, the fat calves, and the lambs, everything, in fact, check this out, that appealed to them. And they destroyed only what was worthless and of poor quality. The very thing that God said make a value in your life is the very thing that ended up taking them down. Friends, I'm going to put my family first. I'm going to put my marriage first. I'm going to put my finances first. And I'm going to make a commitment. And y'all like, you the pastor. Like, you have to come. Like, man, there's, gonna be some, there's times where I don't want to come. I'm going to make a commitment. Come on. Y'all have me thankful. I'm making a commitment to come to the house of God <laughs> every week. Like, I'm going to make a commitment to make church and life prior than anybody. Amen? All right. We're going to start closing this thing out. Last thing is this. You guys can come. Last thing is this. Everybody good? Yeah. Come on. Is this helping anybody? Come on. Ready to start strong and finish stronger. Third thing is this. The third place that they went to is that they arrived at Gibeah. What is this? It's a place of worship. It's a place of worship. And it says in, in verse 6 of chapter 10, At that time, the Spirit of the Lord will come powerfully upon you, and you will prophesy with them, and you will be changed into a new person. Notice the power about this. It says that they were, they were prophesying to him. They were, they, were, they, were pro, they were prophesying to him, and then all of a sudden, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. But then notice this. He started prophesying with them. Can I tell you this? The moment that your words match God's words is the moment you'll begin to find breakthrough. You know that God sees you greater than you see yourself? You know you may think your marriage is over, but God's saying, no, it's not over. You may think that your family is far from recovery. God is saying, no, no. Hear my words. He said, I can save one person, and I can save that soul, and it will save the entire household. Come on, come on are, 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 you, are, you, are you with me? Like, what if this year you, you lived with faith in a way that your words match God's words over you? You've heard people speak things over your life saying, you're, you're supposed to do this. 
man, we love you. We believe in you. Don't give up on that. Like, like, like what if you actually believe the word spoken to you? You know, God can use other people to speak to you. Some of you are sitting here just waiting like, God, I need you, I need you, I need you, I need you. And you haven't called your friend back in three weeks. And God said, I've been trying to tell you for three weeks. Because he uses the hands of other people to serve. Your answer might be coming through the hands of somebody else. Come on, are you with me? You need to finally start believing how God said, let your words match his, his words. So what happened here in this moment? He was surrounded in the presence of God and he was listening to the voice of God. What is the value here, friends? This is why we're doing 21 days of prayer and fasting. The value we need to live with life is what? Make sure we are always in the presence of God because it's in the presence of God where you hear the voice of God the most. Some of you are struggling to get clear direction and peace on something. Ask yourself, how faithful are you in spending time in the presence of God? This is why we're doing 21 days of prayer and fasting, is to reset your approach, reset your habits. Say, I'm going to be committed. and I'm not just going to start strong, but I'm going to keep this going. Because when I need the Lord, every day I'm going to pray. Every day I'm going to read his word. Every day I'm going to worship. And when you stay in the presence of God, when you stay in his presence, God begins to speak. And Saul stopped this. He stopped, he stopped hanging out in the presence of God. He actually stopped going to the voice of God. And if you know the story of, Samuel, of, uh, of Saul in 1 Samuel 28, instead of going to the voice of God, he went to a woman medium. Basically, it's a fortune teller. He listened to the wrong voices, and it took him down. Samuel even called him out on it. In verse 22 of chapter 15. What is more pleasing to the Lord? Your burnt offerings and sacrifices or your obedience to his voice? Listen, obedience is better than sacrifice and submission is better than the offering of the fat. Rebellion is sinful. He says, because you have rejected the command of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. Can I tell you, I don't want to be at that moment. I don't want to be in that moment. And can I tell you the good news? This is the beauty of the cross and what Jesus did is that because of the grace, there is no rejection. Because of the grace of the cross right now in this moment, you can come to God. You can come to Jesus. Come on, how many thankful for the grace of God, right? Doesn't matter where we are. You can start strong today. But I don't want to be in that moment. And I don't want you to be in that moment. I want you to start stronger than you ever had. I want your marriage to thrive. I want your family to thrive. I want the dream to thrive. I want your business to drive, your, your school to drive, the calling in your life. I want everything to thrive in your life. But will you model, and throughout the year, this is my, my, my commitment to you, is throughout the year, through messages and small group gatherings and times we serve together on serve days, everything that we do, we're going to make sure that you're reminded of these values so that you start strong and you feel stronger than you ever have. But you gotta know this house is not a house that rejects. All hell breaks loose, you can leave here today and make the worst sinful decision you've ever made in your life. You better believe the moment you walk through those doors, you're gonna be loved on the exact same. You're gonna be a brick. Just come as you are. Come as you are. The Bible says when he turned, God gave him a new heart. My prayer is that you have a new heart this new year. How do you do it, Brandon? It's easy. It's what we've already said. Number one, you got to turn and you got to say yes. We call this encountering Jesus. Jesus didn't die to be a part of your top three. Jesus died to be number one in your life. If he's not first in every area of your life, what are you waiting on? Start strong this year. Stronger than ever. You can finish strong turn. The Bible says the moment he turned, he got a new heart. Today, all that matters is that you know Jesus. That's all that matters. He needs to be the center of everything. And when he's the center of everything, everything else will fall into place. The second thing is this, you got to focus on your next step. We call that finding freedom. What is your next step? Leaving here today, Brandon, my next step is I need to go to Connect. I'm going to make church a priority more than I ever have. I'm going, to, I'm going to come to the house of God. I'm going to go to connect right now after service. And I'm going to make that happen today. I'm going to start tithing. 
I'm going to start giving. I'm going to model a lifestyle of generosity. That's my next step. I'm going to do it. Brandon, today, my next step is when I leave here today in the car, I'm talking to my wife and I'm talking to her saying, hey, how can we get back to dating again? Sitting down with my family and saying, hey, guys, I miss you. How can we spend more time together? That's your next step. What, what Focus on your, your next step. Like maybe your next step is I'm going to find a Bible reading plan. I'm going to fo- my next step. I'm going to do this 21 days of prayer. I'm going to show up the next four Saturdays as we come together and we pray. I'm going to make, I'm going to let God know that I'm going to hang out with him on a daily basis. What is your next step? You do it. I'm going to join a freedom group. I'm going to join a small group. I'm going to serve. I'm going to join the dream center and serve on a Saturday. Like what is your, ne- you, whatever you do, you're going to find freedom. God is going to change your life. And then the third thing is this. Third thing is this, is you got to know that God has a plan for your life. Come on, you know that God has a plan for your life. We call this discovering purpose. He even said, you can go back and read it. In chapter 9, he's like, man, I don't have anything to give. He looked at Samuel. Got nothing to give. Did I come from the smallest tribe? I come like, like what in the world? And he looked at him and he said, no, you're appointed. You're special. I've called you. You know, the beauty is you don't got to bring nothing but you. If you just come as you are, that's the beauty of being connected to a church and to Jesus. He said, we don't care where you are when you come in. We got everything that you need in place to get you to where you need to be. You just got to be connected. Let's be connected more than we ever have this year. My prayer is that we learn these values. Family first. Family first. Generosity. Come into the house of God. Let's get our worship on every week. You feel better because you reconnect automatically when you walk in. Attend a small group. Attend a freedom group. We'll talk more about that. Spend time in God's word. Spend time in his presence. Be led by the voice of God. Be prepared. (laughs) Everything is subject to change. But I'm going to keep my faith. And I'm going to start stronger because I believe I'm going to finish stronger than I ever have. And I'm believing that for you in Jesus' name. Come on, did you enjoy that this morning? Come on. Amen.